According to the Nek, the actual name of the Ne is Chumo Pu, but as time progressed, the name slowly evolved into the slightly abbreviated Chumpu. Story has it that as Tirtan Rukta Doji was meditating in his cave one time, he saw a vision of Guru Rinpoche surrounded by a host of Kandrama, where Guru Rinpoche narrated to him the explanation of this name. It is believed that Guru Rinpoche informs Tirtan Rukta Doji that while the two lakes at Chumpu, Guru's Pangso and Doji Lhamo's Latso appears as plain water to the deluded eyes, however, to the one with pristine mind, this water will appear like Amrita, Dudzi, and the sound of this water will sound like that of Dharma, Chuta. He was also informed that mere seeing, hearing and taking a sip of this holy water will liberate one from lower realm. After this, it is believed that Tirtin Rukta Doji made a visit to these lakes and like in his vision, he could see Amrita instead of plain water and he could hear sound of Dharma and Gurma and sounds of religious musical instrument. Based on this Tutso, the name Chu which translates to water is being associated with the Ne. The name Mo is given because the main Nangtin of this Ne is Doji Pamo who is a Kandroma, a Dakini or a Mola goddess. Hence the name Mo. And Pu is given because Chumbu is located on a crescent shaped rock which is filled with earth treasure of immortal life to be discovered. Hence the name Chu Mo Pu. Chumbu Ne is located in Dothingyok in Paro. It is about 30 minutes drive from the main town in Paro up until the base of Chumbu climb. From the base till the main Lhagang, it is about 3 hours climb on an average for those with normal walking pace. We however took 5 hours. Of course we had filming to blame but in addition to this few of us were also very slow hikers. The Nekor for Chumbu starts with what we call Nego which can be interpreted as entrance or the door to the Ne. And Chumpu has three of this, each located at about a little more than half an hour distance from one another. From what we hear, it is believed that as we enter each of this Nego, it is like taking refuge in each of the triple gem, one Nego for refuge in Buddha, the other for Dharma, and likewise one for refuge in the Sangha. The beauty of Chumbu is that Ne starts as soon as you begin your climb. The entire route is considered to be blessed by Guru Rinpoche himself and Doji Pamo with whom the Ne is strongly associated. One thing that is very very important before you embark on this journey with us is for you to have a completely open and relaxed mind. For on this journey with us, you will see Ne's and hear Ne's that are beyond the normal concept of your logical imagination. But we hope that you have as much fun on this virtual journey as we did on our trip to Chumbu. <laughs> This is where you do your laundry and <laughs> 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 And this is the horse. Ah, love how much it is. Oh, you know what? Come on, come on. 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 Come guest of the week, two of them. Ani di gachime ke lo. Gift, gift for the mountains, na. Imde. Nagi ne da ani, nagi sungma disulo. Ne da shida disulo. Hey, 
Chu Chu Paka Lo Tebum Rangjin Nilo Rangjin And <laughs> Oh, 
Ouais, ouais, tombe chiant là. Ouais, c'est bien. Ouais, c'est So that's why we are vlogging oh. so that we can remember. Oh. Nego lo hebda ani begolosa permission sik begolose Nek Ye Last nego Good job somchre So you can go either from the left on a junction nahibda or take the right route. But normally what people do is when they climb up they take the left route and then anivekora baby yal haga jebe then they come back from this right route. Uh if you want to reach Laha on Juba, Joseph Jogobachin, then you take this right route.
파가 According to the Neshe that we had access to from Chumbulam, this is what we know of Chumbu. Chumbu Ne is considered as Shinkam of Kurrimbuche and a Kilkor of Doji Pamo. According to the Nehi for Chumbu Ne, the place was first visited by Kurrimbuche in the 8th century. Kurrimbuche, on his journey to the place where the Lhagang currently stands, is believed to have blessed his entire route. This is the reason why we get to see a lot of Ne which has imprints of Guru's foot, hand, body, his horse, his meditation cave, etc. along the route as soon as we enter the first Nego. At Chumpu Ne, Guru is believed to have stayed for a long time meditating and practicing. Chumbu is also considered to be the Kilkor of Doji Pamo. This is the reason why it is also known as Tsari Niva, the second Tsari. This name is believed to have been given by the ninth Jekembo of Bhutan, Kewasha Charinchen. He is also believed to have practiced for a long time in Chumbu Ne. The main Nangten of this Ne are the three statues of Doji Pamo. Chumbu is believed to be the place that has gathering of three statues of Doji Pamo. One from Celestial Rim, Tenghai Lejembi Doji Pamo. One from Domain of Nagas, Olui Lejembi Doji Pamo. And one from Human Rim, Burmi Lejembi Doji Pamo. Out of the three statues, story has it that the statue of Doji Pamu from the celestial realm was discovered by Tirtan Setan Gelsen, who also resided, meditated, and practiced at this place for a long time. This was discovered as therma from the rocky cliff which is located behind the meditation cave of Guru Rinpoche. The other statue, which is considered to be from the domains of Naga, is believed to have been discovered as therma by Tirtan Dukta Doji as prophesied by Guru Rinpoche from Doji Pamo's Latso or the Spirit Lake. And the third statue is considered to be from the realm of human. There are two stories associated with the third statue of Doji Pamo. Story from the Neik has it that the ninth Jehimbo, Gyawasha Charinchen, discovered the statue as a therma from Guru Pangso. It is believed that when the statue was first discovered, it was only about a feet tall. And an aspiration that Gyawasha Charinchen had was for Chumbu to be similar to Tsari Dangba in Tibet. And it is believed that it was because of this aspiration that the statue miraculously grew gradually into the current height in order to be of similar height to the one in Tibet. And as this was happening, it is believed that the statue, while it grew, was not able to be of the same size as the one in Tibet, only by a few inches. And so it is believed that the statue then levitated in order to be of the same height. The other oral account of the story is that Gyawasha Charinchen sent his chief disciple, J. Yantin and Kinga, on a pilgrimage to Tsari in Tibet in order for them to measure the height of the statue of Doji Pamo. However, by the time they returned, Jay Shacharinchen had already passed into Parinirvana, and so Jay Yantin and Kinga is believed to have built this statue. And when they did, it is said that they had missed the height by an inch, and therefore the current statue levitates. No matter what the story is, one of the main reasons why Nekorpa or pilgrims visit Chumbu is to have an opportunity to see and seek blessing from this amazing levitating statue of Doji Pamo. And as we take you on this virtual journey with us, we hope that it inspires you to visit her someday, or that it at least inspires you to aspire to see her someday. Two hours stick be yellow mahini. 
Yeah, look, look. Two hours take me at the enough time. Seven oh, it's seven thirty right now. That's the seven zero three. Seven zero three right now. That's the five hundred five bimu. Go to the parking. Parking in the chima and the mayor calling. We made it. Last